gold. There are not many things we find so attractive and fascinating. It's rare and it's worth a lot of money and it's gold colored and heavy. It's a symbol of German stability. What fascinates me about gold is that it always has an intrinsic value. This one bar is worth about 400,000 euros. Poor. The thing that fascinates people about gold is undoubtedly its high concentration of value. It's a very dense metal with a high value. Gold is therefore also a symbol of financial prosperity. We have a somewhat more down-to-earth relationship to gold. For us, gold fulfills two functions. First, gold is of course an anchor of confidence in the underlying value of our balance sheet. Second, for us, gold is also part of our monetary reserves, such as holdings in US dollars or other international reserve currencies. New York Liberty Street, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. It is part of the Federal Reserve System, the central bank system of the United States of America. The building is a vault made of concrete and steel, highly secure, impregnable. The Fed in New York is entrusted with storing gold reserves from countries all around the world. Also, Germany stores gold here. For the first time ever, some of this gold is now being transferred from New York to Frankfurt. The stamp on a bar of gold provides us with various pieces of information, including the bar's purity. This bar here contains 998.5 parts per thousand of fine gold. It also contains a stamp of the manufacturer's seal. In this case, the US SA office in New York. Next to it is the year in which the bar was made, in this case 1961. The bar is also given a number by the manufacturer, in this case M842. The standard bar weighs 400 troy ounces, which is just under 12.5 kilograms. A bar still corresponds to the standard as long as it weighs a minimum of 350 and a maximum of 430 troy ounces. Until recently, 45% of Germany's gold reserves were stored in the Fed's vaults. Das Gold ist Gold accumulated with the gold exchanges were located at the time, particularly in London and New York. As a result, this is also where the gold stores were located. Ultimately, the gold was left in the same location as it was acquired. And it was the time of the Cold War, of potential conflict on the European continent, and it was therefore decided at the time to store the gold abroad, as far west as possible, with as much water in between as possible, which meant west of the Rhine and in London, in New York, in Paris, so that it would be secure. From a historical perspective, the German gold reserves are the result of the economic miracle following World War II. Until 1973, this was the period of the gold standard. This was a system in which states settled trade surpluses either in dollars or gold. Since Germany was already a net exporter at the time, its balance was positive. Other countries settled their accounts with Germany by depositing gold at the Fed in New York, for example. This gold then became German property. German gold was therefore never actively brought to New York or the other two storage sites abroad in London and Paris. Germany's gold reserves grew from 529 kilograms in October 1951 to the current amount of just under 3,400 tonnes. It really is true. The so-called German economic miracle was paid for in gold. The gold reserves have been relatively stable since the fixed exchange rate system. The Bretton Woods system made way for a flexible exchange rate regime in the early 1970s. Frankfurt, New York, Paris and London. Most recently, the Bundesbank was storing gold in a total of four locations. This meant that 69% of German gold was stored abroad. Now more gold is being moved to Germany. 
Why? The environment has changed. For one thing, the geopolitical situation is now different. And for another, we're operating within a currency union. This means, for example, that the reserves stored in France cannot be exchanged there for another currency, because we all have the same currency in the euro area. In future, we shall therefore have storage facilities in London, New York and Frankfurt. Once the relocation process has been completed in 2020, 50% of the gold reserves will be in storage in the Bundesbank's own vaults in Germany, 37% will be at the Fed in New York and 13% at the Bank of England in London, the major gold trading centres abroad. The gold reserves currently stored at the Banque de France are being dispersed. France is part of the euro area, so there is no longer any need to store gold there for the purpose of exchanging currency. Just over 50,000 bars, therefore, need to be sent to Germany all within the next six years. This is a real logistical challenge. Primarily, it's about security. Since every shipment is a security risk, particularly for those persons who conduct the shipment. And this is why we have kept the details secret from outsiders. Of course, there are also cost considerations, questions of insurance, a large amount of detailed tasks that need to be taken care of in the case of shipments of this valuable resource. Feinheit 999,5 USA 1961. Die Barren, die bei uns sind, werden gewogen. The bars stored here are weighed, x-rayed and tested ultrasonically so that we know how pure the gold is, as alloys do vary. We have gold with a purity of at least 995 parts per 1,000, and that is the traditional standard for central banks. We check this standard when the bars arrive here. These bars derive their value not least due to gold scarcity. In the entire span of human history, only about 170,000 tons have been mined so far. If all of the available gold in the world were pressed together to form a cube, each side would be only just 21 meters in length. As of the 31st of December 2014, 3,384 tons belong to Germany. The United States own the largest chunk at 8,134 tons. The gold reserves are enormously valuable. This is the gold of the German people and we have the responsibility to deal with it sensibly. And this is the mandate we're fulfilling. The vault of the Bundesbank in Frankfurt. The storage boxes are purpose-built. This is the German gold's new home. <laughs>